Good morning, and uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting day uh, here in East Lansing uh, for, uh, for me and my family. I'm Kevin Gustwitz. I'm the new uh, the president-elect at Michigan State University, and uh, thank you for coming out today. Uh, my wife Amy and daughter Tessa and I had a wonderful uh, uh, day uh, on campus yesterday, uh, meeting with the, uh, the Spartan community, and uh, we, we certainly feel like it's a great day to be a Spartan, and uh, we're excited about uh, our journey uh, from Chapel Hill to to East Lansing, which uh, uh, will uh, officially begin uh, on March the 4th, uh, and, uh, but, uh, but I'm, I'm just really excited to be here. This is a, 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 a wonderful uh, a public uh, research university that uh, uh, I want uh, everyone to feel proud of. Uh, I had a chance to talk with a number of, uh, of the Spartan alums over the past uh, three or four days, and I know that, uh, uh, that they are excited about the future. Uh, of, uh, of Michigan State University. Uh, I'm going to have some time to meet with faculty and staff and, and student leaders today and uh, to get a, a better sense of, uh, of their passion uh, for uh, Michigan State University, but also uh, what are some of the challenges and uh, concerns that they might have that we can address. And uh, I'll begin a listening and learning tour uh, that first week that, that I'm officially here in March. And um, that uh, listening and learning tour will be around, uh, obviously, the campus, but also talking to alums and, and others within the community. I'm a big believer in ensuring that there's a strong partnership between uh, the, the surrounding communities of a, of a great public research university, uh, because I believe that uh, a, a great uh, public uh, research university like Michigan State uh, uh, is, uh, is here for the people of the region. And uh, I, I truly believe that uh, Michigan State University uh, will be the, the University for Michigan, and, uh, and I'm passionate about that, and, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to working alongside uh, a, a great community here, but also working with, with you to help to, um, us to make sure we're getting it right and uh, amplifying the great things that, uh, that happen here. So, uh, so with that, uh, I'm very excited and, and happy to take any questions uh, that you may have, but recognize that uh, it's not even day one yet, and so uh, I have a lot of, of listening and learning to do before we, uh, we really get started. So with that, I saw one hand come up. And uh, if you could, uh, part of this is my listening and learning tour is to learn who you are as well, and I hope I get to know you uh, uh, better. But if you could put a, uh, help me put a, a name and face together and maybe what outlet you with, that'd be great. Absolutely. Welcome, Michigan, first of all. Thank I'm you. Sure it's exciting for you. What was it that made you want to take on this role as president of Michigan State University? So I am, uh, I came up through public higher education. My, my entire, I, I, was, I went to, my wife and I met at a, a, a smaller public school in Pennsylvania. Uh, I uh, went to University of Pittsburgh from there, University of Virginia, finished my schooling, and then right to Chapel Hill. And so I'm a product of, of public higher education. I believe strongly that uh, in public higher education and the role that it plays uh, in, um, in helping to prepare the next generation of leaders to solve the world's greatest challenges and uh, working in a collaborative uh, way with communities and, uh, and have been successful in, in leading uh, at UNC Chapel Hill in that way. And I, I just I felt that, that Michigan State was, was as passionately public as uh, those great universities that I have, have served and been to. And so um, I just felt, my wife and I feel like we've been drawn to, to, to uh, East Lansing and Michigan State right now and everything that we have uh, learned about uh, uh, the place over the past uh, few weeks uh, uh, has confirmed that this is the right place for us to be in this moment. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. I know that Michigan State University has been in the headlines a lot lately, um, has been facing some challenges, so what are some of your priorities once you take the role as president? Well, as I said, I want to get out uh, on this listening and learning tour, better understand uh, you know, where we can have our greatest impact uh, right away. I'm a big believer in strategic roadmaps. Uh, the uh, MSU 2030 plan, I think, is a very good strategic plan, but I want to uh, break it down a little bit with some of the uh, campus leaders. Uh, and when I say that, I believe all the constituencies are important and have to be at the table in a shared governance model. So faculty, staff, students, alumni, the, the surrounding community. And, um, and, and we're going to prioritize. I probably want to take that plan and even further prioritize it so that we can show the impact that we have uh, early on. Yes, every institution in higher education right now is faced with challenges, and uh, some of them are not unique to any one place. Uh, and uh, you know, the cost of, of higher education right now and the rising student debt is a concern. That's something I want to uh, make sure that we get right here so that we can 
uh, pride ourselves on uh, outstanding education, but one that's affordable and accessible uh, to all those who earn their path here. Uh, so, uh, but we'll work through those unique challenges that, that exist here as well, and we'll stay true to the promises that I know others have put in place to be sure that we're, I want everybody to be proud of, the, of, of this place. Matt, number on Um, to phrase that question a little differently, why did you choose to come to a school that's had five other presidents in the last As I said, um, I um, am, a, am a believer in, uh, in strategic roadmaps. Uh, the, the last two, uh, interim President Woodruff and uh, uh, President Stanley, have put together a great strategic plan. Uh, I'm focused on the future, and, and uh, this is a community that is, uh, is craving uh, stability stable leadership, and I, uh, I will provide that. Uh, we will make sure that we uh, have a, a strong leadership team that believes in Michigan State University, and, uh, uh, and I felt a calling to this, uh, to this great uh, public research university. The nation needs a strong uh, Michigan State University, not just the state of Michigan, but the nation needs a strong Michigan State University, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Can I do one, one more quick little talking? Um, you are the first former faculty member to leave MSU since the early 90s. Um, I know you maintained your research program a bit in yes. Carolina. Do you plan to do that at MSU and sort of more broadly? How do you think having the experience as a, you know, in teaching research will change your program? Well, I think it's really important. Uh, I've, um, uh, if you go back 28 years ago when I showed up in Chapel Hill, I was just hoping I'd earn tenure someday. That was my goal. And uh, I ended up in a, a leadership role fairly early. Uh, uh, became department chair, center director, dean, uh, and, and uh, of arts and sciences, but also I've held positions. I have faculty appointments in medicine and in arts and sciences. Uh, I'm a big believer in this culture of collaboration across uh, uh, the disciplines, and that's how we solve the grand challenge of our time. I think that those faculty positions I've held uh, are very important in understanding uh, the life of a, of a faculty member, not just to what it takes to earn tenure, but how to to truly have an impact on a, on a, on a place. Uh, and I, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the relationships that you build with staff and faculty or, and, and the faculty and students is critically important to the success. So I believe strongly that uh, uh, that, that will um, uh, help me to be a better president here at Michigan State. And your research program? And my research, uh, we, they have a great program here in kinesiology that's in the area of sport-related concussion. And uh, I, I will hold a faculty appointment there as well as in one of the uh, the medical school departments, and uh, so yes, uh, it will not uh, certainly be the, the top priority. Uh, I, I've got to work alongside a team to run the university, but uh, but I will stay uh, engaged with research. So thank you. Mukoi um, Scribner with WLMS Six News. Uh, welcome, Michigan. I know we're already getting to know you soon here for the next few months or so. Um, we talked about the you know former presidents and leaders of the university here. Um, given that the last full-time president, you know quit his job at um, almost a million dollars uh, uh, a year, and the interim president decided not to pursue, pursue the position, you know, what kind of assurances did you get from the Board of Trustees that, um, you know, they've been kind of making some highlights recently that there wouldn't be any meddlings, micromanaging, et cetera, and despite any assurances you might have gotten, what makes you think that this tiger might change its stripes? Well, <coughs> Listen, as I said earlier, higher education uh, right now, the, the, this is not unique to Michigan State University. Higher education is, is, uh, is struggling in some regards with, with regard to uh, uh, the, the sort of political uh, you know, divide that exists. And uh, I'm convinced that uh, the, I've talked to uh, the governor, I've talked to the former governor, I've talked to a number of, uh, of legislators here. They love Michigan State University, want it to, to again, to thrive. and. Uh, uh, recognize that yes, there have been some uh, some challenges. Uh, I've gotten to know uh, all eight of the board members, uh, both uh, collectively as a, as a group and uh, individually, and uh, I, I, have, I feel a connection to them. and uh, And I have heard each of them say that they're committed uh, to uh, a shared governance model that will keep uh, everyone in their lanes and uh, uh, playing the role that they have to play in terms of their fiduciary responsibilities and. Uh, providing uh, counsel and advice to the, uh, the president and uh, the leadership team. And, uh, and I committed to them that I would build a leadership team and, and uh, that we would work in a collaborative way with them. So I'm, I'm very optimistic and uh, uh, headed to, to toward the future. My eyes are on, on the future for Michigan State University, not looking to the past. Having said that, I do want to say, as I said earlier, there, 
there are still some challenges and issues that we have to stay uh, attuned to, uh, and uh, so that we, we and would not repeat some of the same uh, mistakes that, that have, have occurred. So I, I just want to be clear about that. While aiming on the future, aimed at the future, uh, we have to be cognizant of, of the past. Thank you. Having us all here today, helping us, you know, uh, welcome you to the community. Um, so, talking about, you know, looking to the future, what the future is going to hold. Um, how do you plan on handling some of the topics such as the releasing the master documents and then any potential litigation from uh, North So, uh, again, day one is uh, March fourth. Uh, I still have a lot to learn and to be read in on a number of those. Um, situations. Uh, obviously, um, it's, it's been in the news, and, and I'm aware of it at that level, and, and those conversations will begin, begin here over the, uh, the, the early part of uh, probably February uh, and uh, into my arriving officially in March, and, uh, and my understanding is that there are some uh, things that will uh, have been wrapped up by uh, that time, and so in, until then, uh, I'm really not going to comment on, uh, on how I would respond or react to any of those. Yeah, I think if you talk to um, anyone that I've worked alongside uh, in my previous leadership positions, uh, that I uh, transparency is is really important to me, and uh, and I will work really hard to to be uh, as transparent as possible. Obviously, around personnel matters. Uh, there are limitations on what we can uh, do, but uh, but I also uh, want to be clear that uh, at times people will link um, a quote unquote lack of transparency with perhaps uh, being dishonest, and those two things are, are are very different and separate. And I will guarantee you and promise you that uh, we will um, work uh, with the community in, in, with the highest level of integrity, honest and honesty. Uh, with a, hopefully an appreciation and understanding that we can't always be as transparent uh, until a certain point, uh, especially around personnel matters. But, but uh, I believe in transparency. Uh, the issue with state news, do you think it's newspaper? Um, I want to narrow in on that a little bit more. Uh, did the issue of the NASA docs ever come up during the search process or in your conversations with MSU leaders? No. Next question. I am. Um, I, I, I believe in servant leadership, and that means uh, working alongside. You hear me uh, today. I've already talked about the, those who work alongside me. I don't ever uh, want somebody to feel that they are uh, working beneath me or working for me. We're working alongside each other as a team. I'm, I'm very much focused on a team approach, and when I say that, uh, I mean uh, all of those constituencies are important. Uh, I really, and I, I'm a big believer in gathering uh, as much information and data as possible that it, at the end of the day uh, it's likely the president alongside the team that's going to leave the team that will make a decision around an issue recognizing that you're perhaps not always going to make everyone happy but I, I think that uh, people appreciate the fact that I, that I listen. Uh, I will consider as much information as possible, try to get to uh, a place of compromise and uh, even those that may not agree with the decision uh, appreciate that there's been a process that, that, that I've gone through. Uh, and um, and I believe that you're making decisions alongside folks that, that are thinking about the best, what, what's best for the for the community and um, and uh, so that, I think that's uh, my, my approach. I will get out and uh, talk about the great things that are uh, that are happening here. I think uh, this place is poised for uh, a capital campaign that uh, uh, could um, raise a lot of uh, private funding. Uh, to help elevate some of the initiatives that are in that um, MSU 2030 plan. Uh, I want to do that in a partnership with the legislature, which is why I've already spent some time talking to legislators, and uh, uh, because I believe everything's a partnership, and part of that, the, the, those partners, I think, have to be uh, faculty, staff, students, uh, alumni, community members, and board of trustees, and um, uh, so we're, we're going to pull people together uh, to uh, amplify the great things that are happening. As the 
As I've gotten to know each of the board members, I believe that they truly love Michigan State University. And uh, I, I have not sat at the table uh, uh, in a formal board meeting, uh, and, and that will happen uh, at some point after March 4th. But uh, I, I, I'm going to work hard uh, to, to find the unique uh, talent and uh, expertise that each of them brings uh, to the board uh, as a group so that we can rely on them to help us uh, uh, you know, solve a challenge, solve a problem, uh, find a new opportunity. Uh, and then I think when they're able to bring that back to the, to the table for uh, the, the greater good, I think they'll each begin to see that we really are a team, we are one. And I want to work, uh, I, th I think when I talk about us working as one, that means um, that, you know, the administration and the board, along with leaders of those various constituency groups. Thank you. So I'm sure you're aware that the president resigned. And you, I'm sorry, Ramon. Yes. Good to see you. Um, yeah. She resigned over comments that she was in a congressional hearing on autism. Some of his own unconsciousness. If you were in her position, how would you have answered the questions posed during that hearing specifically? Would you discipline students calling for the genocide of Jews? And then also, how do you protect? students from Palestine on the campus rights to protest um, against backlash from other outside groups. So I'm, I'm very proud of the way in which we have uh, handled the situation uh, on our campus uh, at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, I spent m the first five or six days following the October 7th uh, terrorist attacks uh, by Hamas uh, uh, out on my campus uh, with, leader with my leadership team meeting with students and uh, and hearing their concerns and, uh, and ensuring that them that reassuring them that we are uh, here to support them uh, and uh, and then uh, on October the 12th um, at our university day which is the founding university on October 12th I, um, I I spoke publicly about uh, and condemned the, the, the uh, terrorist attacks by Hamas and uh, talked about the the need for the community to come together, uh, that we would not tolerate uh, um, you know, violence in any way on our campus, that uh, uh, we would not, uh, that, that anti-Semitism, that our campus was in, in, in no way would, would uh, uh, allow anti-Semitism or uh, prejudice of any type uh, on our campus. And following a, a, a campus message the following day where I talked about the, the need for the community to come together, to bring together our Carolina Center for Jewish Studies, our um, Center for Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies, our program for public discourse to, to help uh, uh, our campus community better understand this conflict of which there is a, uh, a lot of misinformation. Social media has only made this worse, if you haven't noticed. And so uh, that's the way I've handled it. That's exactly how I would handle it here. Um, we, as a leading global public research university, have a responsibility to help uh, educate and, and uh, model the way in which we should have respectful discourse around uh, some of the world's uh, biggest challenges. So, thank you. Yes. If what it, as I've already said, I uh, I have spent time individually with each of uh, the trustees. Uh, I have heard them; they've looked me in the eye and have said, "We are committed to a a, a stronger, better uh, uh, Michigan State University that everyone uh, will be proud of." And uh, and I've sat with them collectively, and we had a wonderful reception last evening in which uh, uh, I think all but maybe one was was unavailable to to attend, and. Uh, the, the future is, it's a bright future for MSU, I promise you, and uh, uh, I'm confident that uh, we will be able to work collectively uh, with the board, and um, uh, I'm beginning that process uh, uh, today as I start to meet with uh, some of the various constituency groups.
have uh, another question. Um, before six news again, the LMS six news and everything. Um, obviously, the uh, MSU community has been through a lot this past year. You know, um, the tragedy in February. What message would you want to give to um, not only the students, but Spartans? You know, not only Michigan, East Lansing, but across the nation. I think one of the roles that higher ed uh, right now has to uh, accept and has a responsibility and that is to be very forward-looking. Uh, we need to prepare students for careers and jobs that don't even yet exist today. Uh, if you think about this group uh, that will graduate in, in May here, uh, the, the class of 2024, um, they'll be graduating in May of 2024 but retiring from their careers perhaps in the year 2074. What jobs, what careers will exist in the year 20? 74. A, a great uh, public research university like Michigan State University uh, needs to be forward thinking about that. And I am convinced with those that I've met, I've now met with nearly all the deans, and uh, I've looked at their uh, sort of plans for the future and the curricula. Uh, I have a lot more to learn. Uh, but they're very forward thinking. And uh, just the way in which Michigan State is building out, you know, I, I love the fact that they're proud of their land grant mission. And, uh, the, the responsibility that they hold to the state in agriculture and um, veterinary medicine, but uh, the, the business school is thriving, the, the building out the, the, the health affairs and engineering, and uh, they're thinking like a, a contemporary uh, university should uh, so that we can best prepare graduates for those careers and jobs that don't even yet exist. Time for one more. Um, what is the school's role in I guess memorializing what happened on February 13th. Have you been in conversations to make the memorial and the school coming up and you know anything about this? Or do you have a sense on how much the school should really provide a space for students to kind of have a place to So uh, I'm well aware of uh, the tragic events of uh, February 13th, and I know that that'll be uh, a really important day here on the campus uh, for the community. Uh, uh, and uh, the grieving that takes place following an event like that uh, lasts a long time. Uh, sadly, uh, we had a, um, a tragic event, a shooting on our campus on August the 28th uh, this year. Um, I will say that the, uh, the leaders of here at Michigan State were the first to reach out to those, their, their respective counterpart on our campus to help because uh, they had been through this and uh, it had a tremendous impact on the way we responded. To that, and uh, I know that uh, Interim President uh, Woodruff is um, will be presiding over uh, events on that day, uh, on February the 13th. I think it's it's important uh, to be able to reflect and uh, uh, to uh, honor the memory of those who were lost that day, and uh, and so um, uh, I, I was pleased to hear that that will be taking place. Uh, and uh, uh, my guess is that something similar will will take place uh, in uh, in Chapel Hill. Uh, on August 28th uh, of next year, and uh, we'll learn from one another. Are there plans to build a memorial? I do not know that. But I want to again thank you all for coming out uh, this morning. I look forward to working uh, uh, alongside you, as I said earlier. And uh, uh, I, uh, I believe uh, that the, the media has a really important role uh, in um, keeping everyone honest uh, in these roles, and uh, but also helping to. Uh, amplify the great things that that, uh, that have happened here and will continue to happen here. And I'm excited to be a part of it uh, starting March 4th. So I appreciate you all coming out today. Thank you. Go green. Go white. All right.